G'day everyone, welcome to the Work in Process YouTube channel. What I hope will be the first of many interesting, insightful, useful YouTube videos from a photographic lab. For those of you who know, Work in Process is a small lab in Northcote of Melbourne, Australia, where we focus on high quality processing, scanning of black and white and C41 negatives. Uh, from 35mm right up to 4.5 sheet film. Now, at the moment, Metro Melbourne is in a stage four lockdown, which means all retail and retail services have had to cease operation, which pretty much means I've got a lot of time on my hands. So what I've done, I've gone out and got myself a new Sony uh, mirrorless camera, Upgrading from the old D7000 that I had for almost a decade, may it rest in peace. Um, so I figure why not make some YouTube videos and put them up there and, and see what we can do for you. I put out a question a couple of weeks ago on our Instagram just asking what would you like to know? And there was an overwhelming response, but one of the main responses that we had was I want to know everything. I want to know what happens from start to finish. So, why don't we run through it? I fired up some of the machines um, and we can show you what actually happens. All right, so you finish your roll of film. Uh, you drop it into your lab and the first thing they're going to do is use one of these to extract the tongue. So once your lab has your roll of film, they'll use the tongue puller to bring out the tongue just like that. We'll neatly snip the end off it put what's called a twin check sticker on. So these come in pairs like this. You've probably seen them on the end of your film once they're processed. We'll stick one here and then we'll put the other one on your job bag so we don't lose it. That way we know what films are whose. We'll grab a leader card. Now this is what gets pulled through the machine. So we can attach two films onto one leader card at a time, either 135 or 120. Uh, Grab a little bit of tape just to affix it on, flip him over, grab another bit, stick it on there just like that. And now it's ready to run through our processor. Once we've got our film then attached to the leader card, what we'll do is bring it over to the Noritsu, pop it in, and it'll have a process in just under eight minutes. So the film has now been processed, it's coming out of the processor. What I'll do is I'll put a glove on so I can retrieve it safely. What we'll do from here is we'll grab some scissors and snip the end of it. Give it a quick inspection to make sure that everything looks fine on it and then we'll take it over the scanner. There is one more thing that I want to show you with this processor. Um, it's how it actually works. So it's what's inside of it. So what I've done is I've loaded up a dummy roll here, um, just an old blank roll, just to run through. I'll open the lid and you can actually see what happens inside. Okay. So what we need to do in this is a little bit of a hack. We need to trick it into thinking that the lid is actually closed. So. I just jam a screwdriver in here. Sure thing that lid's open. All right. Let's grab the dummy roll. Take out the last 
cartridge. Put the dummy roll in. Click it on. Alright, I've just brought a light over so we can see what's happening in here. Now, this is the inside of the processor. What it's got is it's got different tanks for each chemical. So we've got CD, color developer, bleach, two fixing baths, three stabilizing baths. And then in here, this is what's called the crossovers. So then they look like this, film runs through them. It goes up in one rack, over a crossover and down into the other rack, up down, up, down, weaves its way through, and then it comes out of the dryer. Now, if we can see, if we zoom in, get the light on it, you can see that the film is just running through there, so that's our film actually going through there. Okay, so if I pull out the first crossover, we should be able to see the film running through it. So, yep, so there's our film there. Coming through, out of the loading area. It's getting sucked down. That leader card's pulling it through. So it'll do that the whole way through the machine, through all the chemicals. What I would like to do is actually show you what one of the racks looks like. So. I'm going to stuff this whole thing up. I'll flick it off. It's going to send off an alarm. That just means, oh, turn on drive switch. I'm just going to say no, just to shut it up. And let's pull it apart. So if I take out one of these racks, take the crossover off. Now, this is not full of chemical at the moment. It's actually full of water. As I said, uh, we're in lockdown in Melbourne. So I had to dump all the chemicals um, at the beginning of lockdown just because they wouldn't survive six weeks sitting there. Um, so it's full of water, it's pretty much just a dummy run. But that means I can pull out one of these and show you what it actually is. So this is one of the racks. So in the racks here you've got the rollers which just guide the film through. Um, It'll come up, come through the rollers on one end here. If we spin this, you'll see the rollers spin. Come through, out, and then it comes out of the other side. And then it'll go into one of the other crossovers. Oh, never shuts up this thing. Put these back in. Um, and we'll just let that dummy roll run out. Now, for those of you who are out there and have picked up that this is actually an SM machine and they know that the SM machines are pretty much trash because there's not much you can do with them. Well, I've he heavily modified this one so it's now working on a pre-mixed re replenishment solution. Took me a long time to figure it out, got it working in the end. So the rep tanks, we've just got the rep tanks here. Um, they're pre-mixed, they're pre-loaded with Kodak Flexicolor Chemistry. Um, yeah. So I'll show you now what's involved in scanning on a Frontier. This here is our Fuji Frontier SP3000. Now it scans uh, 135 and 120 formats, does color neg, black and white neg, and it can also do reversal films. And the main breakdown of it is we've got our keyboard here, which we use to do our minor adjustments. Um, the mouse can, to control it, we've got the carrier here, film feeds in here. Now this one is an auto carrier. It's just for scanning 35 mil films. Um, 120's got a special manual carrier, which uses these frames. So for each different frame size, um, lets us 
scan different formats. To start the scan, what we like to do is just throw the dust off here on the tip of it. Uh, what we're using is a little anti-static gun. Um, it helps neutralize any static that may be on the film clinging on to any dust particles. So once we give that a blow off, we'll feed it in, adjust the frame, we'll blow off as it goes in. When the film's run through doing its pre-scan, it'll then show the images up on our screen here. Um, and the main things we're looking at are just the density values of the different colors and the overall density. As we do that, we can take out some color like this and it changes on the screen of what the preview will look like. Um, and that's just using this keyboard down here. So on our keyboard here, we've got what's called our subtractive colors and our additive colors. We've also got density controls here, plus and minus as well. Now this is essentially the same as what is involved in a color enlarger, um, just as if you were doing darkroom work with color negatives, though because it's digital, it's a little bit more rounded off. Um, you can really control the values of what you're putting in and taking out and you don't need to worry about overly mixing too many values together, causing unwanted densities. Now once we're happy with our image, we just hit yes and we go to the next one. So we, we budget across, the scan is just out of line a bit and we keep going through the frame like this. And then as we go, it will scan each frame just like that. We can rotate and then add some density just to bring the highlights back a bit. Once the Frontier is finished with the roll, we'll export it, bring it onto our main computer, do a final quality check over the roll just to make sure everything's Mickey Mouse and then we'll send it off to our client. last thing your lab will do with your film is then cut and sleeve it depending if you want to cut or sleeved we use this cutter here um, so this cuts into sixes it's got a whole roll of sleeving laid out on it what we'll do is we'll bring in the roll slide it in line the frame up and then give it a chop the six frames that's it now you know what actually happens to your little roll of film when you drop it into your local lab you've learned some of the machines uh, how they're used what's actually involved in them and you now know the process from start to finish. Well, everyone, thanks for following along with that. Uh, I hope you got something out of it. I know I sure did. It was uh, really fun to do. Looking forward to what we can do in the future. If you wanna know something about analog photography, how lab works, subscribe. Leave me a comment. If you've got any tips or tricks for YouTube, I'd love them as well. I am very fresh to this, so anything, anything can help me, really. Uh, look, thank you. We'll catch you next time. Boo-roo.